So HR is, should be always your advocate. I would say if you are working in a company where you feel like HR is the manager's advocate, you are working in the wrong company. A, a lot of times I've, I've come up against various situations that have occurred and I think the beauty of my job or what I tell my employees, whether they be manager or you know what we consider frontline employees or not necessarily salary, is I don't report to him because I don't. Um, I report, you know, I'm very much siloed. I report to a regional HR who reports to a headquarter HR so that way we can be completely objective. So that being said is if you feel like, you know, someone is, you know, kind of confusing your wording and I actually really just had a, a incident with one of my girlfriends where she called me and, you know, HR had pulled her in because, you know, she actually messed up. She was in a very open setting and she made a comment about a senior leadership calling them um, racist. And someone else called the person, um, you know, said that the person was um, discriminated against the GLBT community and someone reported it. And so she was called into HR and, you know, HR started it with basically telling her like, hey, you know, you know, did you say this? And then why did you say this? And she said, well, yes, I shouldn't have said it in an open setting, which she shouldn't have like those types of conversations, like know your space. She shouldn't have had it so openly. Um, honestly, something like that, unless you're in the car driving somewhere or completely off of company property, those types of conversations should not be had. You don't know who's going to repeat it or report it. But that all being said is what she said was when she explained to the woman, like, I thought he was racist because, you know, this person had made comments um, aligning with our president, our 45th president, um, that were racist. The HR person said to her, well, I support Trump. And I said, oh, girl, you need to reach out to her HR person. And I said, write it down, send, actually send an email saying that you have some concerns that you want to discuss with her and then have her write you back. And then when you have the conversation with her, whether it be in person or on or the phone, you need to email her again with a recap of what it is that you guys discuss. So what I'll say is receipts are important in everyday life and certainly in the HR space. The more documentation you have to support whatever issues you feel are happening, the better. I would say in the world of technology where you know people can record things, be very careful what state you're in when you're doing this. In some states, it's very much illegal. Uh, to do that. So don't record someone without their knowledge. But in some states like the great state of Texas, which I live in, you absolutely could do that. Um, I would say a lot of legislation is changing surrounding how these recording devices are because sometimes, quite frankly, there's things on them that the person absolutely should have recorded it and they needed it. Um, but that still has not changed. So just kind of know your policy. But again, what I will say is if your HR person is not for you, if your HR person is putting things in your mouth, if you feel like your HR person is very much biased, get the receipts of that conversation. And then, you know, in the HR space where I get sued all the time, I would say if you feel like you have a case, you have a case. Um, I always feel comfortable when I make decisions about someone's welfare because I know that just like they have may have receipts, so do I. So if someone ever needed to pull them, I feel very comfortable with what I have. Um, and in most cases, I've never lost this far. So that would be my feedback to you all.